And then, of course, we have the ball busting boss B, aka Olivia Pope from Scandal. I want you to think about how that show portrayed black women. First of all, to my memory, Olivia Pope was the only black woman in the show. So I don't really know why so many black women felt empowered by Olivia Pope's character because she was such an anomaly and such a, you know, it didn't even seem realistic. It's like, okay, so am I, is this supposed to teach me that black women have to scrape and claw to get to positions of, you know, maybe that is true, but it never really seemed all that inspiring. If you remember the show, she lived alone in a decent apartment and she would spend her nights by herself drinking wine and eating popcorn. That was her life. By day, she was an advisor of sorts to the president and whenever anybody's back was turned, back was bent over being a bed wench and a uh, mistress to a married powerful white man. But Shonda Rhimes would have you to believe throughout her catalog of work that her purpose is to show black women in empowered situations. You don't say Shonda Rhimes. Hmm. Now I have to give a disclaimer here. I am on record <laughs> saying that How to Get Away with Murder is one of the best written shows I have ever watched. And as a writer myself, I do stand, I stand by that. How to Get Away with Murder is one of the best written uh, scripted television shows I have ever seen in my life. Um, the way that the story wrapped up, um, the themes that it explored, I, I, I stand. However, it does not mean that I did not notice the blatant agenda that Shonda Rhimes put in that show like she do all her shows. The main character in that show is Annalise Keating. Her real name is Anna May, but she doesn't like going by Anna May because she feels like it's too black. So she goes by Annalise. In the very beginning of the movie, or the movie, Lord, the show, we see her getting lip service by Billy Blanks. <laughs> Not literally, but whatever that dude is, that big, tall, bald, black dude that be that was in the show. And one of her students walks in and sees it. He's like, oh, 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 I'm so sorry. So like maybe that next day or so when he sees her again, he, he casually mentions something like, you know, I, I'm so sorry. I really not mean to walk in on you and your husband. But in the midst of saying that a white man comes onto screen and he kisses her and he's like, hey, babe, or whatever. So it's clear that that's her husband. So she's married to a white man. And the black man is just good enough to be her jump off, literally on his knees, worshiping her while she's worshiping the white man. Do y'all understand this stuff? Am I getting through? You think this stuff is accidental? You think it's accidental that Shonda Rhimes wrote a script in which a black woman is in an esteemed position. She is an attorney and she teaches at a prestigious university. She teaches a law class at a prestigious university. She is married to a white man. And not only is she married to him, she not married to him just off GP. She truly loved Sam. If you watch the, the show, she felt like Sam saved her from her wretched, humble beginnings as a black woman, a dark skinned black woman with kinky, coarse hair. So Shonda Rhimes purposely never shows an intact heterosexual relationship with black people. The only black people that are allowed to be in relationships in her shows are black homosexual people. So Annalise don't get to be with the black guy that she obviously likes to some extent. I mean, she got him in her house, you know, cleaning her plate. She has to be with the white dude. And there's a, a, a B plot storyline where 
when she was in college, she was secretly dating a woman. So she's bisexual. And guess what, guys? If you were betting that it's a white woman, ding, 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 you would be betting correct. So in that show, you've got Annalise, which is Anna Mae. She's married to a white man. And in college, she secretly dated a white woman. So ain't gonna be no black man. Ain't no black man come and, and, and she ain't got no good relationship with her daddy either. So no black man was ever going to be a good representation in that show. And Scandal didn't even bother. Scandal didn't even bother to have black men in the show. I think Olivia Pope's dad made an appearance every now and then. You could tell she kind of had this ish respect for him, but more so it was that he was his his over uh basically they try to pin him as the hyper masculine type oh you know he was too ambitious or whatever else but she's not too ambitious your daddy the man who was trying to provide and make a good life for you he was too ambitious but you as a five foot even 101 pound soaking wet woman with some six inch heels on and still uh folks cowering over you you're the person that's not overly ambitious Every time you come on screen, you're condescending. You're making people feel like they're less than you, but you're not overly ambitious. I'm supposed to like that character, but dislike the black male character who wanted something more for his life. And Shonda Rhimes really ought to be ashamed of herself. She needs to go to therapy and, and take care of this disdain that she has towards black men because it's sick at this point. Did you guys know a lot of our popular black female authors are, are similar to this? Uh, they, they, they also hated men. The Lorraine Hansberrys of the world, the um, Alice Walkers of the world, the Toni Morrisons of the world. They loathed black men, which is why they purposely wrote in the black men in their stories the way that they did. They wrote them to be monsters and grapist and sexual deviants, harsh and mean and scary. And a lot of those women went on to marry either white men or became lesbians. And yes, I said became lesbians because you guys already know how I feel about that stuff here. So this is not for play play. Um, these people have power. The media is the most powerful engine or industry or anything that's going on in the world right now. Because people believe what they see. When you look at something, you believe it. You know what I'm saying? When you, so you internalize it. So when you see, the only time you ever see black women on screen, you see them as extremely overweight and bossy and annoying, ex-strippers and prostitutes, or you see them when they do get a little success to them, they feel the need to crap on all those underneath them and make, especially the men, especially their own men, and to try to make them feel less than, and to try to make them feel like there's something wrong with them. And they always put our men out to have like a joke, like to be a joke. Why are black men always portrayed to be such jokes in media? But nobody actually wants any of these women. And that's why they're always single. No well-to-do, I've tried to do well for my life. I'm, you know what I'm saying, doing the best that I can as a man. No black man like that wants a woman who is over 40 pounds overweight. You're not striving, working hard, earning accolades, acquiring degrees, starting businesses, rising through the corporate ladder. You're not doing all of that work to bring home Gabori Sidibe. I'm not, we're, we're not playing those games today. Likewise, you're not doing all that work to bring around a nasty looking face tattoos having, don't even look like your, your skin is ever clean. I can easily go online and see your bare behind. Nobody, no well-to-do black man wants to bring that woman home either. And thirdly, he don't want to bring home the boss B that every time she's around people, she has an air of arrogance around her. 
She does all the bidding of white liberals, even though she swears she hates white people, but all she does is parrot white liberal talking points that destroy our community. So she's a ball of sunshine. And then it makes people uncomfortable, uncomfortable to be around you because who wants to see a man being emasculated by his woman all the time where she's basically uh, uh, relegated you to her do boy. Who wants that? Nobody. Did you enjoy that video from the Tough Topics podcast as much as I enjoyed making it? Well, if you did, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. We go live mostly every day and certainly we have a good time over here. Make sure to leave your comments down below as well and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.